dignitaries on the dais, guests, and, and my dear student friends. My designation is speaker, but speaker cannot speak. That happened to me today also. Because even in the, in the assembly, we have to conduct. But my name is speaker. Whenever we say the speaker, that means he's the main speaker. But in assembly, we are not allowed. So we can give only ruling. So now it is time for me to give ruling, perhaps. Because I have seen that my name wasn't the first in the list. But I was called. As a, because I was the main chairman, so I have been called the last. I own mine. I told the organizer I am not minding for that. I own mine for that. But the only thing, I would like to say some few points if you want to listen. Do you want to listen? If you do not understand, as Mr. Rambada was told the same thing. Because when a person becomes hungry, he becomes angry. I don't know how long you are not taking any food. So anyway, uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate the Bharat Satra Sangsad for its initiative to hold such a wonderful conclave of students and young leaders continuously for the last 10 years. Perhaps you are aware, as Rambhata was said, that we have a population, young population, who are below 35 is 60, she said 60, but as I know it is 65. But the population below the age group of 24 is 50, 50% 50 population below the age group of 24. And therefore this kind of initiative has imm immense importance to our country. In India, all of us should commit ourselves to preserve and promote the cherished democratic values in the country. Therefore, a platform like the Varad Chapter Sangsad, which you have so nicely organized all these years, always gives an opportunity not only to the young people, but also to, also to the guests and speakers like us to learn and understand many important issues, problems faced by our democracy. My previous speaker also she shared certain things of, foreign, of a foreign country. We also understand lots of things. We, have, we can learn lots of things in this conference. It is not that you only learn. We should also learn. And that is the beauty of this conference. The subject for this academic session, India and the Emerging World Order, is a very relevant topic and it is of tremendous importance to the younger generation of our country. To start with, we must first know where India stands today in the world order. Where we are standing in the world order. To emerge as a world order, what is our standing now? 72 years ago, India had gained independence. Over the subsequent decades, our country has managed its evolution in an international system. It is a matter of pride that our country is now considered as one of the emerging powers of the world. This potential is attributed to several indicators, the primary ones being its demographic trends and a rapidly expanding economy. In 2015, India became the world's fastest growing economy with a 7.5% estimated GDP rate. The country must overcome many economic, social and political problems before it can be considered as a superpower. It is also not yet as influential on the international stage when compared to some countries like US, USSR and China. But the fact remains that these countries, these, these powerful countries, always have India not only in their various agenda, but also constantly in the back of their minds. This is where India's importance lies in the world order. A rising India now wants a seat at the table of global power, which is huge military and growing economy. In spite of few hiccups, India is now ready to set its own terms on everything from defense to climate to trade. Here I would like to quote from a book written by Eliza Yers, who was U.S. Deputy Secretary of State for South Asia from 2010 to 13. In her book titled, Our Time Has Come, How India is Making Its Place in the World, she wrote, quote, More than at any time over the past quarter century, 
India is well on its way to a global power. India is a rising power of Asia and should be better understood and better appreciated in its own terms. This is a good compliment to us by American diplomat. The second question is whether we have the exact advantage to become a global power. Some of the advantages which we possess, I will be short, very short. At present, at present are, first of all, it is that we, the, we have a young population, which also Ramadabji has said. Second was global diaspora. More than 35 million Indians live across the globe. And under fair opportunities, they have become socioeconomically successful, especially in the US and UK, where Indians are the highest earning ethnic demography. Third, foreign language skill. Incidentally, India has the world's largest English speaking and English understanding population. And Indians are also learning mother major world language. You, you will be surprised to know that it has the, India has the second largest population of fluent English speakers, second only to the United States in the world. So we have a, that advantage. Then economic growth. India's current economic growth has improved its standing on the world political stage. Though it is still classified as a developing country, India is currently showing strong development trends. Science in science and technology. India's progress in science and technology is significant. Our space research is phenomenal. Energy. To bridge the energy crisis, India is presently constructing about nine civilian nuclear power reactors. Russia has offered to help India build four more atomic reactors. It was only recently that a civil nuclear energy deal was signed with US and the European Union. The last but the not least this military factor, India maintains the second largest action duty force in the world after China. India has developed a good foreign relation with most of the major world powers, even to make the environment favorable for economic growth. India is investing on its relation, relationship with China. With all these strong parameter, India is certainly emerging as a formidable world power in the near future. There is no doubt that currently India's political moves are being influenced by economic imperatives. After the election of 2014, which resulted in the formation of a stable and decisive government at the center, India received another momentum in the global affairs. The current dispensation which has established India in a prominent position of power in the world, is now determined in taking India to the top. That India has set a target to become a $5 trillion economy by 2024-25, itself is an expression of that determination. I have no doubt that in near future, India will emerge as one of the strongest and most vital world power. However, however before I conclude, I would like to make two observations which are of immense importance to realize this goal. First point is reputation building. A country's reputation is very important and is considered as one of the crucial signifiers of its global status. The internal situation here plays a significant role in determining the external reputation of the country. Multiculturalism of our country is held by everyone and because of its policy of unity and diversity, India has been successful in building a unique place in the global stage. Thus, internal politics of the country very well gets reflected in the global scenario and hence we need to be very cautious of our action to not let this democratic ethos of our nation to be disrupted. This is very important. Recently, India is experiencing a, experiencing a number of democratic protests in different parts of various on various issues. These have also drawn the attention of the world. In fact, the eyes of the entire world community are now fixed in India, fixed over India. I sincerely feel that democratic form of public protest should be always respected and the issues should be settled through dialogue and peaceful negotiation. We have no option on, on this matter. Only such step can rate only such step, steps can raise the reputation of our country, which is, must, which is a must to enhance our global status. And finally, an independent power zone. We need to cultivate zeal, courage, and willingness to develop a power hub exclusively of South Asia. 
for India to emerge as a world power and building a very robust reputation, it is important to strengthen the relations in the subcontinent, primarily with its immediate neighbor, Nepal, Pakistan, Bhutan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. It is a major impetus to emerge as a major global power. The, the blustering of the relation with the subcontinent has tremendous potential to develop into a power zone in itself. We know that our relation with some of our neighbors have not been always cordial. Therefore, good diplomacy is very crucial here. Dealing subtly in difficult scenarios instead of aggression is the key. Winning argument not by force but by convincing the other party to accept the point is what we need to pursue in our diplomatic agenda to become a global power. To emerge as a world leader, it is important to remember that a peaceful border and cordial relation with the neighbors, neighbors is inevitable. With these few words, I conclude. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.